So the last few videos have been talking about how we would trade a continuation gap. Now, in my experience, the continuation gap is a rare beast. When it happens, the profits are generally good and the predictability is better. And again, this is from my experience, not a recommendation, not advice, not all that kind of stuff. However, when you've got a bigger gap, you tend to get more of a shift in supply and demand. What about when we talk about the second gap scenario? with gap lower and we're looking to trade the gap fill. How would we do that? What are we gonna look for on the chart to give us the idea for the gap fill? So again, we've got two things that can happen in that scenario. So let's say we've gap lower and we're looking to fade the gap. We're gonna use a gap down as an example again, stick with the same thing. But this time we wanna see the two different scenarios that could potentially occur. Again, forgetting about if we gap and we just sit there and do nothing. We kind of wanna avoid that, not get involved in that anyway. But look at the two scenarios that we can wanna get involved with the gap fill, assuming that's the yesterday's close and assuming that's today's open. Okay, so we've gap lower and what could happen? We could do this, drive up straight away, or we could do this, drive down straight away. Pretty obvious, but you know, you have to look at all these permutations that we can get. So now the scenario is if we're looking for continuation trade, we're looking for two different things. And this is where, you know, some of you, the more astute of you are looking at this are gonna say, well, hang on a second, they're the same thing. How do we know the difference? Just recall back on how we decide whether we're gonna trade with the gap or against the gap. It's looking for the bigger picture. Where's the gap in relation to the prior day's trade, the prior week's trade? How is the strength of the market overall? And then picking a direction that we're gonna trade, sticking with it and either being stopped out and saying, you know what, I thought it would continue, I'm wrong, I've taken my loss, or I'm right, I'm with it, I'm sticking with it. So in this instance, we've identified perhaps the gap isn't so big, perhaps it's still in the range, perhaps it's something or nothing, perhaps we've seen some overnight session push higher and we think it's some strength here, perhaps whatever reason it may be. What are we looking for? So if we're looking for the gap fill, we can either do one of two things. Now often we get, if we see genuine strength off the open, we're just looking for the classic pullback trade. The very simply put, we're looking for strength off the open as long as it's not too close to the gap and it's not giving us a decent, and it's still giving us a decent juice in the trade, then we can take it. Now obviously if the gap's here and it's pulled almost here and pulling back right by it, you know, you kind of want to be a little bit careful because you know it might just fall short and roll back over and you're gonna be you know you're gonna be caught out on that. So you want to see number one, good strength on the drive from the gap. So in other words, it literally gaps open and then just rips off. It just supply demand, auction theory again, advertising for buyers, buyers decide to step in, bang, massive, massive demand coming in, goes up and pauses. And then we're looking at the classic flag patterns, the classic pullbacks, moving averages, timing those, we'll talk more on those in a later video. But that's kind of the thing we're looking for. The push higher, the pause, it just can't quite go lower. Again, the depth or the distance of the pullback relative to the drive is low and then we're looking for a further continuation and all out of the gap. And obviously, if we're swing trading it, we might use that as a leg in for a longer term swing trade for a multi-day move. Okay, so let's flip it on its head and say, listen, this thing is, uh, there's the yesterday's close, there's yesterday, today's open here, and we are driving lower. Now this is kind of another scenario that we get. It's almost as if it's the final thing. A lot of stops are being pinged. People may have had stops overnight. They're being triggered early on in the in the process, in the um, trading day. And we just, I've got a little bit of push lower, but you know, we kind of start to, to undo that relatively quickly. Now that to me is the key. And you've got the best, the, the, the my, in my opinion, a good way of trading this is to let this happen. Let this do what it needs to do. Let it go to the downside faff around down there do what it wants if it continues lower you're out you're wrong it doesn't matter you wouldn't get involved you're not even taking a loss on it however if it comes back pretty quickly and then crosses above the high of the day then you can start looking for those buy trades for the ultimate gap fill you can always say it's tested down here i don't want it to be too long down here I don't want an hour or anything like that it's got to be kind of five to 15 minutes max and then it's showing some strength and then I'm either buying as we push through here. Now a little bit cautious of how it's done that because if it's done it very, very quickly, you know, we could sort of retest down here and you could be left hanging with a, you know, quite a bit offside before it goes again. I'd rather wait and see how it is on a short term basis. But ultimately that's kind of my filter that says, yes, you know what? We've done some work down here. We've pinged out a few weak hands. We've got a few shorts involved. Those boys are now trapped. Those boys are now gonna be hurting. If we push to highs, 
that's going to help my cause and the gap is up here all the people who thought it's a continuation are wrong I'm on board now I'm looking for the push higher my ultimate target is the gap fill or if I'm swing trading use it as a leg in for a further three or four day move but the point is you know, you want to see really that it crosses over the high before you flip your um, view to saying yes now I want to get involved in it it's demonstrated some stuff but now it's come back there's pure demand in it let me now look for the long and capitalize on those people that are wrong and just think that that was just a little stop hunting exercise we're back in the game again going back to the previous point you would look back and your bigger picture just to confirm that and say well actually we haven't gapped out below the low or if we have we've faked out we've pushed back up straight away as in prior weeks low we're still in a very strong chart everything is looking reasonably bullish this is just a blip and this now uh, price action is is confirming that this is indeed just a blip so a couple of ways different ways of trading gaps you know we can go into massive detail with them because it's such a great um way of of, of of trading but just some kind of structure there to go off and find your own rabbit hole to go down and, and perhaps develop some strategies uh, from there